policy this week, and nobody barely covers it. They barely covered yeah. it. I don't get. Yeah, they, I don't we, get that we, at all. We look well because they don't want to. They, they, they really don't. They want to say he's not about policy, and so if he talks about policy, it's going to bury it. ABC Evening News uh, last night after the after the Trump economic speech that lasted more than fifty two minutes. They devote 33 seconds to what he actually said, and then another 160 some, so uh, more than like 168 seconds, so more than five times what what they did there uh, to other political garbage. They don't want to present him as a guy with ideas or plans. They want to present him as an empty suit who says crazy things. That's 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 their shtick, and they're going to stick to it. Uh, you know, at least. And I was talking to one of my one of my staffers who was writing the story today. I said, "Look, not at the number of seconds, but look at how uh, NBC, which gave it 50 seconds, and CBS covered it, which gave it 80 seconds." I said, "And don't think of this as seconds. Think of this as math." And I said, "So in other words, 50 seconds is 50 percent more than ABC did." 50% and 80 seconds is actually two and a half times the amount of time that ABC devoted to his speech. So, so I mean, that's, I know these are low numbers, but still, when you think about, okay, you, you gave a speech and CBS gave you 80 seconds about it. That's, that's pretty reasonable. Politicians give a lot of speeches. That's, a, that's, that's really not a bad number. I mean, they should come back to it, revisit it, and all sorts of stuff. But the point is, 80 seconds, at least they weren't given in the back of the hand. But 33 seconds, I, well, I've probably done 33 seconds just now talking about it. A little more than that, actually. Absolutely right. It It's amazing what they cherry pick. I mean, you know what? I think they were all just too busy burying Trump as being finished and, and wiped out because a poll came out after the DNC that he was behind. That, that had to be why they didn't want to cover it. Well, no, they, they don't want to cover it because they want to destroy him. The, do you see uh, the, the Rutenberg column on the front page of the New York Times yesterday? Yeah, absolutely. Explain to everybody you know, about it. This, this is, people, people did not see this. This is the quintessential example of how bad things are. The most left-wing newspaper in America, New York Times. Okay, you know, I mean, there's, there, you, you could argue Huffington Post is more liberal, but that's not a newspaper. The most left-wing of the traditional news outlets runs a column on the front page, which is essentially endorsing it. And that's what, that's what, if they ran on the opinion page, you could argue, okay, they're just having another view. Now, they put it on their front page, above the fold, uh, only a couple other things up there. And the column basically was, a rationalization why the most left-wing newspaper in America should be more left-wing and cover Trump and just be blatant and list him as a demagogue and and you know, un- ir- you know uh, too irresponsible to have nuclear codes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that is the institutional view of the American media, not just the New York Times, the American media. And because of that, because that's their view. Why should we listen to them? Why should we allow them to spin this t- t- pretty obvious Second Amendment comment into something it's not? You know, the American public needs to stand up on its hind legs. I, I reflect back to um, a, a uh, Broderick Crawford version of uh, Huey Long, and he talks, he's talking to ordinary people about how they're being used by politicians. And he says, you've got to stand up, stand up your hind feet and fight. And, you know, that's where, that's where Americans really need to be in dealing with the American media, because, you know, there's no choice that they don't want a fair election. They don't want, I, they didn't want Bernie Sanders. They don't want Donald Trump. They didn't want Ted Cruz. I mean, they've, throughout this election, they've been picking and choosing. Why do yeah, we allow and, that? And then you got Rutenberg saying, how are we supposed to do our jobs when we have someone like Donald Trump always in the news cycle? I mean, come on. You want to talk about, a, uh, you know, 
I harken back to the slavery days of the idea of a white man's burden. Jim Rutenberg's talking about a journalist's burden of actually trying to do their job. Come on already here, man. It's ridiculous. Like, like we need to have sympathy for them for doing what, what they sh- think that they should be doing, and that is thinking for us. Come on. Yeah, and, and, and oh, by the way, that was all the king's men. Um, I, I, uh, I quick Googling there. The point about it is you, you need to, people need to understand how bad they're being played. Journalists across the board uh, are trying to determine more so than they ever have who wins this election. They don't want you to have a view. They don't want you to have a choice. They think they thought all along that they knew who should be given the nomination. So uh, Jeb Bush, simply on the, you know, because of his name, because of his popularity, he got a lot more coverage than other people in the GOP. Ted Cruz, the week where he won the first Hispanic to ever win a primary or a caucus ever in the history of the United States, the week where that happened, his news coverage actually went down, and it was mostly negative. You know, Absolute crazy. This is this is how they have played the whole game. So yes, we ended up with the two most famous people running for president. You know the the two names that we have known in America for decades. Now that's partially that's the nature of the the beast. Now we're in a very uh, media savvy, uh, populist, and celebrity oriented culture. It happens. But the media drove that. They drove it for Trump by giving him billions of dollars, billions of dollars of free airtime. And that doesn't count the more than a decade the man got on NBC running The Apprentice. Now, if you're a Trump fan, you're saying, well, that's fine. And it is perfectly fine. He wasn't running for office. But what isn't fine is how as soon as it's obvious who he's running against, and that he's the presumptive nominee, a man who was never racist in his entire life, as far as the media were concerned, suddenly is a racist, suddenly is crazy, suddenly is stupid. And then you look and you say, oh, wait a second. I know I've heard this somewhere before. Oh, that's right. I heard them say that Donald Trump wasn't just a racist. I heard them say that Mitt Romney was a racist. And that Mitt Romney was crazy and stupid. And I heard them say it about John McCain. And I heard them say it about George W. Bush. And I heard them say it about Dole. I heard them say it about George H. W. Bush. And I heard them say it about Ronald Reagan. And that's as far back as I really could track. But, uh, you know, that's since 1980. So 36 years of American politics have been saying the same three things and just Re- reordering them. If you disagree with the left at all about, you know, uh, what they call affirmative action and what I call blatant discrimination, you're a racist. If you disagree that we, you know, that Black Lives Matter is, you know, is not, a, you know, if you think it's not a good thing, if they, you know, if they're blocking roads and, uh, you know, <laughs> rioting in Minnesota is not a good thing, then you're a racist by the left. If you think that anything that they disagree with, you're pro-gun, pro-free speech, if you don't think that uh, the, we should gut the First and Second Amendments, well, you're crazy. Oh, wait, oh, you, you don't know some key policy item that, that wonky people want you to know. Oh, then you're stupid. Well, this is, like I said, this is the game they've been playing against the right forever, and why people listen to it, I, I'm... I'm befuddled and why turning it around why you can expect that the GOP will allow some of these complete pieces of human filth uh, as moderators I you know I mean look at who they ended up with in the debates this time you know standard lefty talking points for you know, CNBC let's put John Harwood on there what person on earth thought John Harwood should be a, a debate moderator the same person most likely thought like Candy Crowley should be a debate moderator in 2012. And that person's an you, idiot. You know, Dan, you really got to get in touch with your feelings on this issue, because I don't think that you've really scoped it out as much as you should have in, in preparation for this interview. You really got to yeah, learn I, how to I, open I, up, man. I'm too mellow. 
That's what it is. But you know what? Let's take your point a little further. Let's take it out of the political arena for a second. There are those on the left that want to tell people who should be carrying the American flag in the Olympics. Talk about the most absurd things. You know, the story comes out that Michael Phelps was voted by his fellow Olympians to carry the flag in the opening ceremonies. And W. Kamau Bell, a comedian who is now being given credibility by CNN for being some sort of political commentator, writes an article saying, well, the Muslim girl who's in fencing should do it, and what a great message that would send. And it's okay, Michael, you've got, you know, what is it now, 19 gold medals and 23 medals overall anyway. You don't need this honor, even though he earned it from the respect of his peers. Well, see, this, mean, is, this, is, this is the this height is the... of liberal media. This is the height also of lefty stupidity, that, that it's no longer about merit. You know, oh, well, she's Muslim. That's not merit. She picked being Muslim. There's no merit to that. You know, he swam constantly for years. He worked hard. He's talented. He's athletic. Uh, you know, masterpiece. 19 gold medals. My goodness. And yay, yay Baltimore. Proud, proud of my hometown. Uh, and he earned it. But they want to give it to her because of diversity. This is, this is what the left does. You know, they, they absolutely try to fix everything based on bogus diversity. It, it, it was the most absurd thing I saw on the news this week. And there's been quite a bit from Hillary short-circuiting to, to, to this topic. But listen, we can only fit in so much every month. I want to make sure that we tell everybody about uh, the uh, Media Research Center's documentary coming out, Collateral Damage. And it looks like... Uh, you guys have been getting a little bit of flack from the left about it. Oh, yeah. The left, the left hates any time you tell the truth story about America. The, the truth story about coal in this country is the left has destroyed coal and you know, tried to hurt uh, every place from Appalachia to Wyoming that is involved in coal. And so we sent you know, video journalists out there, reporters out there, to, to tell the story about coal. And you have a chance to both you know, help us Get the word out for that video, and you know, just go. You just go on to. Uh, I think it's uh, right now on mrctv.org, and you know, help us help us out. Get that word out. Absolutely, the documentary we're talking about is foreign. Uh, I'm sorry, collateral damages, forgotten casualties of the left's war on coal. Right now, it's on mrctv, which is the sister organization of newsbusters.org. Check it out right now. Go over there. Watch the video that the left doesn't want you to see. It's a great watch. Dan, what else can we plug? Basically, every article, by the way, folks, we talked about today is on newsbusters.org. So check it out if you want to know more about anything we've been talking about. Two last things. I will plug my regular weekly column that comes out on Friday mornings. You can find on newsbusters.org in the culture tab. It uh, comes out early morning, Friday mornings. It's about the crazy things the left does on the web. And then lastly, you can follow me on Twitter at Dan Gaynor. That's D-A-N-G-A-I-N-O-R. And by the way, f- become friends with Dan on Facebook. You will find some of the most hilarious videos. I think I shared the Filipino diving video from you, Dan. But I actually have, I have a friend of mine, it's funny, who doesn't work in the conservative movement, but she said to me some of the best videos ever. <laughs> I mean, you know, if people are looking to find somebody to do part-time work in the, in the movement, I mean, she'd be awesome. It's just pretty funny. Absolutely. It's great stuff. I'm glad to have you on. We'll do it again next month. And uh, listen, it, it, we're getting close, so next month we're going to really start looking. I mean, after Labor Day, everyone's going to start looking at politics, right? Oh, yeah, because the debates begin September. Oh, goody. We're going to have lots to talk about then. Dan, thanks for coming on the show, pal. That was Dan Gaynor from Newsbusters and Media Research Center. Check out newsbusters.org. Guys, I check it out every day as part of my daily blog roll. A lot of great stories on there. Everything we talk about in that interview, you can find on Newsbusters this week. Good stuff talking about media bias. Russ wasn't even listening because he was in the chat room making jokes. No, I was Just listening, saying. Gene. I know you were listening, pal. I'm just making a joke myself. But the chat room's been hopping. We've been having a lot of fun in it. And uh, you guys need to come check it out at www.behindemmylinesradio.us. 
Listen, someone uh, in the chat room is saying Jesus was a badass carpenter. <laughs> I listen. <laughs> you can only imagine what else is being said in there. That's the only one I can actually. And say on that's the what you're missing, guys. <laughs> Check it out. Only on behind me lines.